Well, on last week's episode of Sailing Frog's Leap, I finished putting in that seagull water purifier. This week, I'm going to get down and dirty. Oh, we're bilge diving. Yeah. And then, well, I'm going to meet up with my friends Rob and Don. Oh, we're firing up that disco ball. Yeah. All right, I did this off camera because it was super dirty to get into the bilge. And, and, and it's not just dirty, but bilges are gross. So if you've ever dove in a bilge, you know you're talking about oils, fuels, anything else that might get in there. And, and you know, so you got to mix a salt water, fresh water. If you have a sewage leak, you might have sewage in there. It could be anything in there. So, or if there had been a sewage leak in the past and nobody ever cleaned it out, this is the nature of the bilge. The nature of the bilge, right? So I wore this when I was doing the bilge diving, so I'm wearing it again. I put it back on. I'll just go ahead and show you the pieces to the bilge system. At the top, it bolts on where the engine lip is, goes over this. There's a bolt stud. The wires get zip tied to here and bolted like this to the pedestal and here you've got the float switch and you've got the pump. This is a monster pump that was on here, probably a Rule 2000, maybe a Rule 1500, but from what I saw it was a Rule 2000, it's a big pump. I'm not gonna put a big pump like that on here. I just don't think it's necessary and if I carry a smaller pump, I can carry two and if there's a problem, then I know I can just change it out. I mean, I certainly am not going to be relying on any bilge pump to keep my boat afloat. If you have a sinking boat, you need to be getting to shore, <laughs> right? Let's just get that out of the way. <laughs> We're going to be taking this off today. We're going to be putting the new one on, pre prepping things, right? We're just going to be prepping things and shooting some video, right? Right? So anyway, this is the pedestal we're going to be working on. Let's set it down. I'm going to show you some things too. This was the old pump. Look at this baby. So this, you can see, you know, it sat on that strainer, which was screwed down to the thing. So that's how it was. It's heavy. This pump is heavy. These things are made to last. You can just look at it. It's been down there a while. I'm going to retire her. There's no point in relying on. Plus, she's a big amp draw. There doesn't need, you, there was never a need for her to pump that much water. Even when I was going down from San Francisco and I knew there was a water leak. This is monstrous. <laughs> this is monstrous. <laughs> that's going to get thrown away. And this is going to get thrown away. This was the float switch. There are different variants, and I'll explain why I agree with whichever previous owner put this one in. I totally agree. <laughs> but one of the things you do have to do from time to time is pull it out and clean under here because oils and stuff will get in here. And then it'll make it to where this float switch, you'll hear it click. See, when you, when you, if that gets gummed up with oils and whatnot in the bilge, this won't work properly. This is going away. Let me show you what I bought today to replace both of these things. Well, I bought this pump. This is not nearly as big as the other one, but it will pump water. And that's what it is, what is what I need. Um, and it has the correct adapter and it pumps 1,100 gallons per hour. Now, this is a zero foot head lift. How much vertical distance does it have to travel? You'll probably get 500 out of this in my boat, but that's fine. That's pretty good. It's continuous. A continuous pump is uh, because it's not human. It doesn't have to eat, doesn't have to sleep, you know? What I like about it is specifically is that it has uh, a backflow preventer, so whatever it, water it does pump up will keep up there because if it doesn't get the full six feet it's if it gets only three feet high it's going to stay there until it gets pumped again here's the thing i like the most about it it is 12 volt model that draws at 12 volts dc she's going to draw 3.7 amps max Woo! <laughs> you were talking 12 amps for some of these big pumps you could be going through some battery. <laughs> so I really love the, um, that's why I'll just carry two of these. They're cheaper, they're easy to replace because they're smaller, pull it up, yank it down, done, right? There are different schools of thought on this and there's room to disagree, so 
knock yourselves out. And my float switch that I, is the same exact one. This one, these two are the same. I mean, the, the printing on the top looks a little different. But these are the same float switch for all intents and purposes. The great thing about these and the reason why I bought this again is because of this housing around it. When you have this sitting on the bottom of the bilge, the float in here is going to float based on the water level. And it doesn't matter if a rag falls into the bilge. If a rag went over one of these ones that was open and free, if you've got one of these bilges that's super shallow and you've only got six inches to deal with, hey man, one of these that you can look at and touch, easy. When like a cloth or something comes over it, it'll still be able to detect water level. It'll still be able to kick the pump on and off. It's going to work perfectly no matter what is resting on it. So yes, uh, they get nasty in there with all the oil and stuff. And now this is after I cleaned it up quite a bit. So it was pretty stunning how much oil was in here. The thing could barely move. Now it moves pretty freely. Um, but if you're going in there, you might as well put a new one in. I mean, yeah. So we got a new one of these, a new one of these, and we're mounting both on this. Let's get started. I have trouble wrapping my mind around the need for these little bits of hardware. You know how I feel about little bits of metal on boats. However, down here, I think we might be able to use these. So there it is. We got it off. And then we have the flat base. So here I'm drilling a few pilot holes to match the necessary pattern for the new pump. We're just gonna tighten these down now. Okay, so we have a float switch and we have a pump. And it's on there really good and it's tiny <laughs> compared to the other one. It was a monster. ahead and add a couple more of these just in here I just hate the idea of loose wires like this having like loose bits and stuff Well, my friends Rob and Don from the Bay Area are in town for the Baja Ha Ha. I'm gonna go spend some time with Rob, them. Rob, what's up, dude? Hey, man, how are ya? Oh, oh. This is your marina? Harbor Island West, baby. Whoa. Yeah, I like it. I don't think I've ever been over here. Beat this. 
Oh, this is the Uncle Sam skeleton, right, Rob? Yes, it is. Grateful the, Dead, baby. What's the significance of the Uncle Sam? It's just one of the Grateful Dead's logos um, for the U.S. Blues and some of their other songs of that era. Yeah. Look at that. It really is made for comfortable cruising, and it, it does. And the, but you can see the cockpit's pretty large for a 34 foot boat. Everything leads back here, so you can single hand this easily. Oh, I'm gonna single hand that beer right now. There you go, right there. Mm. Dawn! You know what we call her now? Captain Dawn. She passed her six pack. Oh. Oh my God, I was thinking about doing that. That's so cool. You actually I can't it. believe you have to do it. You're like Coast Guard. For me, part of it was I've always wanted to charter in the med. Yeah, and that's the one that's place right. you need your international certificate of oh, competency. Oh, really? Yeah, so true. you either have to take ASA 105 bare boat, bare boat. which is a two-day overnight, which in San Francisco is about 800 bucks because you have the boat for overnight. If you have a captain's license, it's an automatic thing. And so that's that was A, less expensive, but B, more interesting. The Burgee? What? <laughs> right there, ba ha ha ha, 2022, baby. We're keeping a journal of our trip down. And part of the journal, of course, because my wife is a beer aficionado, is she's rating the beers as we go. So, for example, she's she's talked about one of her favorite beers there, Hop Dog. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Hop Dogma was one of them. And Morro Bay Yacht Club. Here we are here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so for anyone doing the haha, -ha, you know, if you're wondering where the party's at, it's on Salt Whistle. Oh, yeah. You can buy me a boat and a bottle of wine to boot. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Frog's Leap. Hey, I'm on my way. Subscribe and join me.